Hey guys, it's Vintage Vinny, and I have a thrift store haul to share with you today. Got a great assortment of stuff as usual, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you all. Stay tuned! <laughs> Okay, so the first part of this antique mall haul is from the mall that I told you all at the beginning of the month was closing. Today is the 30th, their last day of business to the public. Thankfully, I was talking to the owner as she was ringing me up for the items I bought, and she told me that she is still going to be in business. She's just moving to the antique malls that are literally a five minute drive from this town. So I was happy that she wasn't technically going out of business, it's just the shop she was in she had to close, which is always sad, but it's nice to know that she's still gonna be selling stuff. So I have two of the items here that I got, but there's one item that I'm gonna save for last because it is just so, so cool. I'm going to go through all the other stuff that I purchased, and we're going to go ahead and you guys will see the last item. And it was something I really did pay up for, so anyway, let's jump right in. I only spent on these items here $5.88. I found some more flocked birds, and if you watched my last haul video, um, I found some for Miss Stone Home. These were $0.75, cents, so I'm going to go ahead and add these to her stash. Originally $1, which was a great price. Now. This uh, mall didn't have some of the things that I had seen the last time I was there, which I was kind of disappointed about because some of the things I was hoping to get and get for some good prices, but I mean, it is what it is. You can't really ignore it, or you can't really avoid it, so it's okay. They did have that one sailboat wall pocket that I wanted, originally 15 and then the booth was having 50% off. I couldn't get myself to pay $7.50 for just one wall pocket, so I left it. Maybe I'll find one like it somewhere else. I was just really happy to find the ones that I did at the antique mall that I visited in Pennsylvania for like less than $3 a piece. Anyway, these were in a guy's booth. They're 70s die cuts. Um, I don't know exactly who made them. I've seen them before plenty of times. I just wasn't willing to pay what the person was asking. He originally had $16 on these, and of course they sat and sat. I would have never bought them for $16. He was doing 70% off in his booth, I guess, to clear out whatever merchandise he had left. And I paid $4.80 for them. So we got the jack o lantern which was made even into the 90s. I remember seeing these in Goosebumps, the TV show. Single-sided and heavy cardboard stock. So we got that one. Oh, I guess they were Beastal. Because Beastal's on this one. Yeah, these are definitely Beastal. Oh, of course, I could have looked... Hold on. We could have looked right there. Beastal Company, made in U.S. So I got the jack-o'-lantern. I've got the owl, which is really cool. And this one I've always liked, the bug-eyed skeleton or skull. I always thought that was super, super cool. So for what, the... I don't even know. I can't do math right now. Dollar twenty something a piece? Probably a little bit more than that, but that's all right. $4.80 was a steal. So those were the cheaper items that I picked up at that antique mall closing. Like I said, the last item that I picked up from that mall, I'm going to show and share at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. For $1, I got this whole bag of political buttons. It says, Swat a bull weevil, vote McMahon. Now, I did try to look up this exact pin back, and I couldn't find it on eBay. So, I might need a little bit more information. I also did do a little bit of research on the internet, and unfortunately, I couldn't find anything about this. I did find that there's a female McMahon politician, but I couldn't find any of these pins. Now, I didn't really have a great signal in this mall, so I really took a chance on buying all of these. I mean, for a dollar, I really didn't think that was too much to ask. And even if these only go for five bucks a piece, I've got a whole bag of them, so I'll, I'm probably going to just pay off everything I bought to keep right then and now. 
just on these. But let me know in the comments below if you know anything about this um, politician and when she was elected, when these pinbacks are from, because I know they're older because of the way the style of the pin. There's no clasp to hold it in place and prevent yourself from being poked. So that's the first bag of randomness. This is the second and last bag of randomness. This was $2.25. The main reason I wanted this bag was for this picture here. It looks like they're at some kind of formal. Oh, there's three of them. I didn't know that. So we've got pictures of, I guess, like someone's birthday, because you got the birthday hat and stuff. I just really like the look of that. These are probably teenagers or even young adults, probably from the 50s. No indication to say how old they are. Yeah, that one's okay. I like these two better, personally. I thought those were very nice. For two and a quarter, I thought that was really well worth it. And then we got some ceramic pieces. We got this um, butterfly and leaf, or ladybug teapot. It's just marked Japan. I might send that off to Thrifty Treasures because it's got a butterfly on it. I think she might like that. Or Miss Stonehole might get it for crafts. Who knows? And then we got these... Um, bears that I might have to do some research on. So I got this one. And then here is another animal. They're kind of rubberish. And they have a mark on them. A Novelty Company, Inc. And then, oops, sorry, I'm out of focus here. Let me try this again. And it's got TB. I don't know who that is. Let me know in the comments below if you know what TB stands for. These might, these might actually be something. Even if they're 10 bucks, that's still really good. And then these last two items that are in here that I thought would probably go really well together. So we've got this Japan cup, and a staple just fell out of there. And then there's a monkey. I don't think they go together, but I like the little monkey. He's cute. He's marked 39, which I guess was 39 cents back in the day. So I might keep the monkey myself. And give these items to Miss Stone Home to craft with. And maybe she'll want the, uh, maybe I'll give her this picture too. Of all the people dancing, she might be able to do something fun with that. Or maybe I'll, I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. So I'm going to probably put these in Miss Stone Home's bag of goodness. This next group of items came from the second antique mall that I visited this weekend. Didn't find a whole lot, but I am satisfied with what I did buy, and most of these items I did take a chance with. So we'll see how I do. For $2, I got this really, really groovy 1970s frog switch plate cover. There's no maker's mark on it to indicate where this was sold originally. I think personally this probably came from Sears, only because I know that they did make a frog canister set that was really popular in the late 70s. So I would assume that's probably when this was from, mid to late 70s. I did pay $2 for it. I think somebody who really likes frogs would really enjoy this. It is made of plastic, so you know it's going to last a long time. It has yellowed from age. But I think it's still fun. I think I might ask maybe 12 to 15 for this. And remember, if there's anything that you see that you are interested in purchasing that I mention is for sale in my videos, the link to my eBay shop is down below. Now, these next items I paid a dollar a piece for, and I thought that was really worth taking a chance with. I bought a whole bunch of bracelets. Or, no, these are bracelets. Bangles are metal. Now, they were, like I said, they were a dollar a piece. This one looks to be the most modern of them all. This is definitely 80s with all those different colors. And you know what this reminds me of? One of those Pop-Tart flavors. I can't remember exactly what it is. It's a berry flavor. The frosting on the top is purple like this, and it has the blue icing. 
on the top. So this one is definitely 80s. I got some mostly plain white ones. I got this blue one here that's kind of spackled with gold. I got this wooden one here. And then I've got these pink ones. Now this one has a mark for Hong Kong on it, so in terms of the age, I would say these are probably 70s, 80s. Now I did buy them, like I said, for a buck a piece, so I invested um, so how many are here? One, two, three, four, five. So there are eight of them. Oh, and this one looks kind of like wood. So I'm gonna test these for Bakelite. Because I know Bakelite bracelets and lots can do really, really well. So I went ahead and took the chance for a dollar a piece. I mean, I'm sure Thrifty Treasures would have done the same thing. I mean, Tanya, if you're watching, would you have done that at an antique mall for a buck a piece? So I went ahead and did that. And I also found something National Geographic brand new and sealed for $5 from 2015. I'm not going to share that in this video because it's not vintage. So... Let's go ahead and check out what else I found. So now we can go ahead and jump into all of the other smaller trinkets that I got. Now there is one item that I did buy that is kind of risque, and I'll go ahead and uh, save that for the last portion of this video before I get to my favorite and most expensive purchase. So if you have kids, maybe send them off into the room. I'm going to try not to talk about it too much, that way the video is not too terrible for 550 I found these I, I've never ever even seen these before this is a set of vintage Tiffany and Co playing cards now before I bought them I did check and see if all the cards were there in case you don't know a full set of cards is 52 plus two jokers making that 54 cards there are 54 cards in each making the total 108 for the for the deck I paid $5.50. I think I can sell this set for $25, and that's what I'm probably going to end up doing. I've seen these before. I thought this was really, really fun. I think it's a napkin holder. It's made in Japan. He was $1. That, that would just be a fun little thing to put in my kitchen. Found this in a Christmas section. It was originally a dollar, and it was 20% off, so I only paid 80 cents. It's a bottle brush tree with a plastic bell, and it's got mercury ornaments glued in there. That just might be a fun little piece to put on a Santa Claus or something, so I'm going to definitely find some great use for that. I found another aquarium piece. This was $1.25. It's marked Japan on the bottom, but you all know I love my beachy and nautical stuff, so anytime I find this stuff for cheap, I like to pick it up. Let's see. So for... Let me see if I can figure out. He was... Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. I'm looking at my... Um... I think he was 220 to something. I can't remember how much he was because I they had to take the tag off, which drives me crazy because I always forget. Um Let's see. Oh, here we go. Spaghetti Santa Claus. So I paid $2 for him. It looks like he toppled over from too many cookies or he's drunk. He's marked Napco. As you can see, very faintly, you can see the NAP for Napco wear, Japan. Haven't decided what I'm going to do with him yet. Maybe I will sell him. I'm not exactly sure yet, but for $2 and... Yeah, $2, you can't really beat that. So this little squeaky Santa Claus was two seventy-five and 20% off, so I only paid two twenty for it. It's got a Santa on top. It's a little chimney. And they left the tag on that one, so that one's easy to spot. Of course, you don't want to squeak on camera.
See, there it goes. That's how it's supposed to work. This is marked Hong Kong, I believe. Yep. I love finding little stuff like this because it's just fun to put out on a little shelf for Christmas. Like, I'm thinking when I get my own place, I'll get a really small little trinket shelf, and I'll put all of my uh, like little fun stuff that I find for the different holidays. This wind-up chick was two bucks. Overall in really good condition. How he works is you just push this little lever down here. And he looks like he's pecking the ground. So that's pretty cool. He'll go with all of my vintage Easter stuff. I did pick up two matchbooks. One of them being the Goodyear one was... It was written in here. It was 75 cents. However, I don't see anything for 75 cents, so I think they may have charged me 50 cents, and I got it for 40 cents. Not bad. And this um, is for Tracy's Corners in Blue Ridge Summit, PA. I love that image of the Goodyear Tires sign. I love that. And for $1.60, I did pick up this 7-Up matchbook. Again, just true art. All the matches are pretty much gone, but I absolutely love that. That's just going to go into my new jar of old things. For $3, I picked up this really cool celluloid football player. He has the Japan stamp on the back of his head there. I think I've seen stuff like this before. Don't know the age of it. Uh, maybe the 60s, but I'm not exactly sure. Now, this puzzles me. I found a vintage Roseboro Santa on a sleigh candy container. Nothing wrong with it, no crack. Oh, actually, it's broken right here. I didn't even see that, but that's okay. So... There were a bunch of people scooping up these vintage candy containers at the one shop. $15 a piece, and one person was buying one for $50. I couldn't believe it. I, I would never spend that much on something like this. Uh, however, I think for a collector's purpose, $15 a piece is a really good deal. In my opinion, maybe to someone else. That's a little crazy, but personally, I would never spend that much. Unless it was something super, super rare, super hard to come by, that would be different. But because I've been brought up to be a cheapskate, I'll stick to items that are as-is like this. So this person also had a bunch of these in their showcase, $15 a piece. Again, to a collector, that's pretty darn fair. However, because the sled was broken here, and which I don't care about, this one was only $3.75. He's also missing a little um, hoop here, I guess, which you could hang it on the tree if you wanted to. So he was $3.75 and 20% off of that, so I only paid $3 for this. Still, I think, really, really, really reasonable considering what other people were paying. So I went ahead and picked that up. Before I show the somewhat risque item, there's one other item, or three, I should say, item that I would like to share with you all before we get to the last two items. So these next three items are something that all of us see on a daily basis for the most part. What is it that you think these are? What do these go to? There are three of them. And like I said, we all see these pretty much on a daily basis. Do you give up? These are traffic light lenses. So we've got red, we've got yellow, and we've got green, which looks blue. I paid $5.50 for the three of them. Like I said, I really took a chance with these because I didn't have a signal to look these up. So these, if I'm going to sell them, which most likely I'm going to, are probably only going to go for about $20 or $25. you got to factor in shipping with these because you got to bubble wrap them, you got to put them in one box together. But I thought they were kind of cool. I mean, I've never seen these outside of, you know, a traffic light. So I don't know how old they are. I'm assuming they are a bit up there in age because if we look at the back here. So we've got a number, which I guess is a stock parts number. 
And then we've got the Adler patent pending. So they've got scratches and stuff all over them, which is normal from age. But I am going to take some glass cleaning to this, like maybe some Windex or maybe those Farberware glass cleaning wipes that I have and see how well they work. This one has got some kind of grody stuff on it, which I'm going to attempt to take off with the glass cleaning wipe. And if somebody just needs it to replace a traffic light lens with, that's no big deal. I just thought that was kind of cool. So now we're going to go ahead and check out the last item, which is risque. So if you do have kids in the room, maybe just send them off for a little bit. And I'll try not to talk about it too much. That way we can get to the last item after this. So this is the last item that I picked up from this antique mall. It was $9.50. And it was there the last time that I went. And for some reason, I just told myself you need to get this because it's so different, so unusual. And if you can't tell, I did go ahead and censor the exposed area, just the, the butts. But it's an old photograph of two women standing I guess, and they're holding a tree? I, I don't know much about it. I mean, if you look at the frame on this thing, I mean, this is old. This is probably, I don't know. I don't even know how old a frame like this is, but I thought it was just super, super neat and super, super different. It's faded, and like I said, look, it's, it's a little bit more clear now that when I angle it, but definitely something I've never seen before. I might see if maybe I clean the glass up if it might help. I'll see what's going to happen. I'm going to probably take it out of the frame and just see what the image looks like. But like I said, it was really different and unique and very beautiful. And I don't think I could have left it behind for somebody else to grab. So I went ahead and bought it thinking it was just super different and it's going to be paid off anyway. So not too, uh, not too shabby, right? And this is the final item of this haul video. How freaking badass is this 1950s mid-century modern phone clock lighter lamp combo? All in very good condition. I love the spackled detail of the shade. And this is what's called an accordion shade where it kind of folds up into itself. Held together by chains. The clock does work. The lighter does need to be repaired, but it's definitely a very interesting piece. Now, I hope you all don't faint when I tell you how much I paid for this because normally I would have steered clear of it. So this is the last item that I bought from the antique shop that is closing. It was originally $145. I paid $72.50. Like I said, that's a little out of my norm to pay up for something like this. But because it was so different, so unique, it's my color, this robin's egg blue, spackled, just perfectly mid-century, what I love. I went ahead and bought it because I knew I could get this thing paid off. And I split it on two cards, so one bank account didn't have to bear the burden of a $72.50 investment here. Now, let me show you all the manufacturer's um, mark that's on it. So after purchasing this and showing it to my dad, we did do a little bit of research on it because it was kind of a higher investment, something I wouldn't normally ever do. Someone did have this exact same lamp up for $125 and it did not sell. I don't know if it's just because the shipping was too high or what. But I like it for myself, and like I said, I did buy things that are going to pay this off, and I'm going to make profit on the other items that I bought. So I'm not too worried about paying up for it. And this is like I always say, if you buy something that you really, really like, but you've bought other items that you are going to be reselling to help pay off the item you're keeping and make a profit on the items you bought for cheaper than your larger investment, why not? So I thought this was definitely a really cool piece, and 
it doesn't do it justice with the light on the camera, but this is a really nice deep turquoise color. Now the ones that do sell for a lot of money are the pink. Pink for some reason is just really, really hot. Pink anything vintage for the most part, like lamps and Pyrex. Pink Pyrex sells pretty darn well. Blue and red do okay. I think if I were to sell this, I would at least try to double my money, like ask 150 if I ever decide to sell it, which more than likely not, so I'll be happy when I buy or when I sell the things that I'm keeping for myself. Did I just completely mess that up? Yes, I did. I will be happy to keep this and sell off the other items that I bought to sell to help pay for this. So it all works out in the end, right? So I thought this was just super cool again, and I don't know if I got a close-up of the clock face. Now I might have to replace the little knob on the back so I can adjust the uh, time on here to make it accurate. That'll come with time, of course, and those are easy to find. Like if I find an old beat up lamp and I need the uh, switch for it, no big deal because it's gonna work. I plugged it in, like I said, and it does work. I will be posting this to Instagram so you guys can get a better look at it. Just an awesome, awesome piece. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. All the links to my social media accounts via Instagram are down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.